In this video, I'm going to show you how much you can learn from one very cool line of JavaScript code. This video is based on an article Javier Marquez wrote at the URL shown here. The line of code, shown here, was written by Adi Osmani and is documented on GitHub at this URL. Let us first take a look at what this line of JavaScript does. I'll paste it into the console, and press enter, and you can see every element on the page it now has an outline on it and the outlines are all different colors random colors as it turns out I'm gonna make one little change so you can see this a little better these are one pixel outlines that it's currently putting on I'm gonna make them two pixels and you can see they're a little thicker now focus on one of the outlines while I run this again you should have noticed that that outline and all the others changed colors so the purpose of this code is to help you with your CSS layouts. If you have divs that are overlapping in some strange way or floating in the wrong way, this will help you see what's going on, looking at the margin and the padding and so on of those elements on your page. But what Javier was struck with was the coolness of the line of code. So we're going to take a look at a different page. This is one that I made up just so that we could look at how this code works. And I'll paste the code again. Again, I'm going to change it to two pixels in the console. Press enter. And you can see this has just got a bunch of divs that are squares. I'll show you the source. Here we go. A bunch of divs that are squares that are just laid out on the page. And when we add, when we put the line of code in, again, I'll change it to two pixels. We get outlines around those divs. All right, so how is this working? Well, the code really just does two things. It finds every element on the page, that's one, and then it puts an outline on those elements of a random color. So first, how does it find all the elements on the page? It uses this dollar dollar function, which can only be used in the JavaScript console. It is the exact same thing as the document.query selector all, except of course, that it's shorter. So dollar dollar asterisk finds every single element on the page. Just as document.query selector all asterisk finds all the elements on the page. Asterisk is just a wild card for any element. But as I said, dollar dollar only works in the JavaScript console. I'm going to change it to document.query selector all for the purposes of this video and then break out this code into separate functions to show you what each piece does. I'm going to switch over to this page. And you can see when we load the page, it does the same thing as our other page did pretty much, but it shows the line of code on the page. And every time we click it, it reruns. So we're getting different random colors. So let's take a look at the code for this page. Here's the code broken out into different functions. The first thing we do is we add event listeners so that when the page loads or the user clicks on the screen, we call the start function. In the start function, you see the document.query selector all star. That's the method that gets all the elements that are on the page, including the HTML element, the body element, all the divs, and every other element that would be on the page. Query selector all returns what's called a node list. And a node list is very much like an array, but it's not exactly like an array. And unfortunately, one of the ways in which it differs is it doesn't have the for each method. So we can't say doc, document dot query selector all star dot for each. Instead, what we do is we call the for each method on an empty array. And we could call it on array dot prototype, but the syntax is shorter if we just use this open bracket, close bracket dot for each to call it on an empty array. And we call for each using the call method of the for each object. The for each method only requires one argument, the function to execute for each element in the array. However, in this case, because we're calling it using the call method, it's not the array that we're looking at, but the node list. So it's going to call outline for each element in the node list that document.query selector all star, or in our other code, dollar dollar star, returns. So let's take a look at the outline function. Now, remember what's happening here is that each node in our node list 
is being passed to the outline function and being received as parameter A. So the A variable is that node that's passed in. And then we just change the value of outline of the style of that node. So we're setting it to two pixels, solid, and then pound in a random color as a hex code. So for example, white would be pound FF, FF, FF. And we're going to call the get random color to get that hex code. So let's take a look at get random color. The first thing to understand is that colors as hexadecimals range from zero to FF, FF, FF. Zero is black and FF, FF, FF is white. Now these numbers are base 16. The base 10 equivalents range from 0 to 16,777,215. And we can see that by using parseInt. So 16,777,215. In the JavaScript console here, I have parseInt FFFFFF, comma 16. The second argument there is the base. I press enter. And you can see it gives me 16,777,215. Do the same thing, but instead of FFFFFF, I'm just going to put in zero, and you can see it gives me zero. So that's the range. I'll drag in my calculator here to show you something. Two to the power of 24 equals 16,777,216 which is just one more than FF, 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 minus one. And we get the equivalent of FF, FF, FF. Okay, and a little aside here, we're going to talk about what it means when something is base 2 or base 10 or base 16. So we'll start with base 10 because that's what we're all most familiar with. And we'll start with the number 1. The number 1, base 10, means 10 to the power of zero. And anything to the power of zero is one. If we put a zero after one, we get 10. And what that means is 10 to the power of one. And 10 to the power of one is 10. Add another zero to get 100. And that is 10 to the power of two. 10 to the power of two is 100. Add a third zero. And now we do 10 to the power of three, which is 1,000. Add a fourth zero, 10 to the power of 4, which is 10,000. Let's look at the same thing, base 2. The number 1, base 2, is 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. Put a 0 after that. We have 1, 0. We can't call it 10 anymore because it's not really 10. So 1, 0 is 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. Add another 0, 1, 0, 0. That's 2 to the power of 2, 4. At a third zero, that's 2 to the power of 3. 8, a fourth zero, 2 to the power of 4, 16, and so on. So, to get our magic number here, 16,777,216, we need to do 2 to the power of 24. And the magic number is actually one less than that. Now, back to our code. In the code, you see this. Notice that gives us one more than our magic number. This is the left shift operation. And what it does is it adds 24 zeros to 1. So this is the equivalent of 1 followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, 24 zeros. But it's a binary number. So it's the equivalent of math.pow 2 to the 24. So all that is to say that we could replace this with 16,777,216. Of course, this is shorter. Then we multiply that number times math.random, which gives us a number between 0 and 16,777,216. But that number is a float, so we need to get rid of the decimal. The way you usually do this is you either parse int it or use math.floor. In this case, we're using the double tilde operator. The tilde operator is used to negate a variable bit by bit. It's a bit complicated, but what concerns us is that the tilde operator gets rid of everything after the decimal. So tilde tilde 
does a double negation and gets rid of the decimal, which is the equivalent of parse int. The final thing we need to do is turn that integer into a hexadecimal. And we can use two string to do that. We pass it 16 to make it a base 16 integer, and then we return color. And that's it. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks to Javier for letting us use his post as a basis for this video. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other great programming posts.